Uh, before we begin, let's make confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. The title of today's message is, What Would You Do? What Would You Do? So, you know, we always think, there, there's a couple of words that I, I mentioned before on my sermon is the uh, word sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is when you see someone going through a hardship and you go, oh, I feel bad. Oh, I hope you feel better. That's sympathy. But empathy is really going into that person's situation and, and trying to truly understand what that person is going through. So instead of thinking about what a person is going, what kind of hardship a person is going through, thinking about, man, what would I do if I was in that person's situation? How would I react if I was in that person's situation? Right. So I, I think it's always to, uh, you can never tell until you experience it personally, right, how you would react. You know, something, you know, there's something we always say in the military, if there's a grenade here, what are you going to do? If somebody throws a grenade here, we all say in the movie, you jump on the grenade, you cover the grenade, right? Yeah, sure. Are you sure you're going to do that when a grenade is thrown in front of you? Or are you going to be like, run away? <laughs> Uh, so you would never know what you would do until the situation comes. But that's why we're here, aren't we? Right? That's why we're here today, holding on to the Word of God. So when the time comes, when the time schedule of God comes, we act to the glory of God. Amen? And that's why we're here. Today, as you listen to the message, pray, God, help me to truly hold on to your covenant. So when the time schedule comes, I can make the decision to live for you and live, you be used by you. Amen? Amen. Last week, we shared the message of being a, the pride of a Christian. And I said, when you truly decide to live for God, the hand of God will be upon your life. The hand of God. So the hand of God is really the power and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And that kind of power and guidance of the Holy Spirit comes when you decide, God, I want to live for you. I'm going to make this decision for the glory of God. Uh, so we held on to that message and we've been praying for the basketball camp, right? And um, last Sunday we had it. To be, to be honest, even though as I was praying, I wasn't really sure how many would show up. <laughs> uh, I was talking to one of the leaders uh, from the Filipino community. I said, hey, let's have a basketball tournament together and we'll host it uh, and let's just have fun. And uh, the guy's like, okay. And uh, one of our deacons found, found a place, very small place. Uh, and when I first looked at the picture, I was like, oh, it's not, it's really small. <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like, you, you know, when you're somebody, sometimes embarrassed to show your house, maybe it's kind of, I was like embarrassed kind of to show, you know, when the, the, the people, when I was inviting them. You know, when you invite somebody, you're going to have a nice big party, right? I was inviting them, I was like, oh, I don't know. Uh, so, but we went and went there. And guess what? 25 of them was waiting. I was like, wow. 25 uh, Filipinos were already there waiting for us. And uh, we were playing basketball. And, you know, surprise to my unbelief. <laughs> I saw, I was like, wow, God had prepared everything. Right? I think I saw it. We, were, we all really enjoyed the day. We played together. We're going to invite them out to our church and to our event. And hopefully further uh, amazing answers may come from this event. Um, but as you hold on to the word of God, answer, it is God who gives us the answer. Amen? Yeah. Right? It's never up to us. The only thing God says, hey, believe what I'm trying to do through the message that I'm giving you. So this is the most important time. So what would you do? I hope you place in your heart today with that question. Say, I want to do what, is, what you want me to do when the time schedule comes. Amen? Amen. So as an, a little bit of introduction, I want you guys to do what is right, necessary, and absolute. Okay? What is right, necessary, and absolute. That's what you need to do every single time. I mean, when you're doing something, don't try to think about some grand, amazing thing before you do anything. Just do what is right. Do what you're supposed to do. All right? If you do what is right, you know what's going to come? God will show you what is necessary to do. When you do what is necessary, as you continue to do that, God will show you what you absolutely have to do. These are the steps in which God shows us important answers. So if you do what is right, what is necessary, what is absolute, those kind of answers will come in your life. So what is the most important thing as children of God that we need to do as we hold on to the word of God is pray. Amen? Amen. Pray. Prayer isn't, God, I want this done, so come and do it for me. That's not prayer. Prayer isn't seeing an issue in your life and go, hey, you, come here and fix this. 
like my child does sometimes. He's like, Dad, come here, fix this. <laughs> I need this done right now. Oh, you're not going to do it? <laughs> right? As if it, like a child. You know, we sometimes you pray like that, right? God, oh, please. <laughs> we pray like this, you know? So God, be like, okay, 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 okay stop crying. Here. I'll give it to you. Uh, uh, we do need to pray. But prayer, what, is, what are we really saying when we pray? Prayer is saying, God, I want to do what you have planned in my life. That's prayer. Amen? Amen? So when I say prayer, you can't do prayer without holding on to the word of God. Holding on to the word of God. So at least once in our day, for at least however long you can do, set a time for God and to say, God, I'm going to meditate on the message you have given to me. Right? If you can start your day or end your day or during the middle of the day, stop from what you're doing and say, I'm going to meditate deeply upon the message God has given to me. That's a time of healing. Okay? That's a time of being strengthened by God. That's a time of restoring true thanksgiving. That's a time of not being deceived anymore. Because like I said, one of the greatest things Satan deceives us is through reality, through true issues in your life. But... We're not orphans, are we? Right? We're not widows, are we? We are children of God. Amen? Amen? God has an absolute plan in our life. Never in a slightest second in your life does God look at you and say, well, I don't know what to do with you right now. I don't know what to do with that problem you're going through right now. God does not say that. Okay? So the moment you say, I'm going to meditate on the word of God is a time of healing, time of being strengthened, and time of restoring true thanksgiving. And because your life is so important, how do you pray? You pray with your schedule. Everything that's going to happen throughout the day, think about that meeting and pray and, and, and seek out God's plan. What are the, some of the answers you have prepared? I mean, last week I met many people in preparation for the uh, festival. I met am am ambassadors, I met community leaders, I, met, I was meeting a lot of different people. And amazing answers took place. Why? Because I'm holding on to the word of God, and I'm praying with the word of God, seeking what God's plan it is in every single meeting. Okay? We can live a day without thinking any of these things, and still be fine. Nothing's going to happen to you. Nothing bad's going to happen to you. But you will lose out on the amazing works of God. Okay, so today, I want you guys to what? Start meditating on the Word of God. Pray with the schedule that you have before you for the next day. Pray with it. And this is, I think, one of the most important aspects of prayer that you guys need to do, at least before you go to sleep, is to reinterpret everything with the gospel. Amen? Amen. Reinterpret everything with the message that God has given to you. Unless you reinterpret your situation with the message God has given to you, I'm telling you, you're going to end up with scars. You're going to end up with stress. You're going to end up with worries. Right? But when you reinterpret everything that's taking place in your life with the word of God, you will see God's time schedule. Oh, this is what God is doing. This is what I need to pray for. This is what I need to be doing. You will begin to see what is right thing that you need to do. What's the necessary that thing you have to do. What's the absolute thing that you have to do. You will begin to open your eyes and see. So uh, what do you need to do? First, we need to start praying. Amen? Amen? We need to hold on to the word of God. We need to start truly putting our heart in prayer to seek out God's plan. And like I said, prayer isn't telling God to do something for you. Prayer is you following God in your life. Amen? Amen. So what would you do? So let's look at uh, what the early church did in response to the issues that they were going through and learn about one of the things that we need to do. So number one, the response of the church when faced with adversity. Response of the church when faced with adversity. So in verse one, it says this, about that time, about that time. And if you've been following along in our message, what time are we speaking about? We're talking about a time in which Gentile ministry is starting to take place. Okay? God begins opening doors of ministry to evangelists to Gentiles and amazing answers. Now, the leader Peter begins to see God's plan and amazing things should be taking place. At an important, crucial time, about that time, it's about that time, what's taking place? Herod the king laid violent hand upon some who belonged to the church. 
Right? He killed James, the brother of John, and the sword, and the, uh, when he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. So, I mean, I've been mentioning this. When something good is taking place, you're holding on to the word of God, and you receive grace, and you think to yourself, wow, it's going to work now. Some great thing's going to take place. But what's awaiting us Monday? Great persecution awaits us Monday. <laughs> okay? Herod the king laid violent hand, right? I mean, think about it. Just think about it, guys. You're doing good. You're receiving grace. Oh, I'm going to live for God. You think Satan's going to just sit back and be like, oh, go ahead, please. Yes, live for God, for the glory of God. I'll just sit back and watch. No. He's going to now put all of his attention on you. Okay. Let's round one. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Satan says, violent hand came upon the land. All right? We look at the violent hand and we forget about which hand? The hand of God. We just spoke about last week, okay? You look at the violent hand of Satan and we forget the almighty hand of God upon us. Amen? Amen. So don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Uh, you can tell a lot about a person when, when they're faced with adversity. You know, how that person acts, how that person makes decisions upon when issues and problems comes, you can tell a lot. Uh, sometimes you don't even know what you have or what you're holding on to until you really are faced or you're, until you're tested, until you're tested, right? Even companies, when they're making a product, they test it after test after test to see if this product stands, okay, before they bring it onto the market. So even they themselves know, hey, we can stand by our product, right? I mean, think about when God said to Abraham, hey, kill the one and only son that whom you love, okay? What did Abraham do? One second, God. Let me think about this. <laughs> uh, you know, yes, I, my son, I love my Isaac. I love him so much. Okay, you want me to kill him as a burnt sacrifice. Okay, that's cutting the gut open, taking out the intestine, burning it on the altar until there's nothing but ashes left. You want me to do this to my one and only son? Okay. Hmm, I don't know. I think this might be the voice of Satan. <laughs> he might say, okay. What did Abram do? At, at, that, at once, he replied. Right? At once, he, he took to his son. At once, he, he went to the mountain and God went to him. To, he tied him up. Right? He didn't tell his wife because his wife would go crazy. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> so his wife would go crazy. He didn't tell her anything. Took him up. The son's asking, where, you know, everything's hurt, but where's the sacrifice, God? And he's thinking to himself, you're the sacrifice, son. <laughs> he's going to tie him up. And what did he do? About to strike him down. Did God not know Abram was going to do that? Of course God knew, right? God wanted to let Abram know what he knew. Amen? Amen? Do you know the covenant? Do you know what you're holding on to? God wanted to show Abram what he was holding on to. It was the covenant. Amen? Amen? Sometimes God shows us so many things when we're faced with issues and problems. Okay? So what did the church do? What did the church do? This is what the church did. Verse 5, so Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made by God, to God, by the church. Amen? Amen? The church, what did they do? They held on to the word of God, and they went into prayer. Amen. They didn't make up some kind of secret special force and let's go capture Peter out of the prison. Right? Let's make this plan and break him out of prison. They trusted what God was doing, and they prayed to God. That's what they did. Right? When adversity came, what did they do? They held on to the promise and they prayed. That's what we need to do, guys. Amen? Amen. Um, so think, of, think about to yourself, think to yourself, how do you respond to adversity? How do you respond to problems right? when issues come? Um, issues come. You all have issues, right? Right. I, I have issues <laughs> myself. You know. Sometimes I act very physically to issues. Right? And I realize, oh, yes, I'm a pastor. <laughs> I need to hold on to the covenant. Right? Uh, but we all go through issues. Like I said, today, already start this week with the answer, guys. Amen? Amen. Because adversity is going to come. Don't pray, God, get rid of problems in my life. Help me not to go through problems in my life. To that, God would say, when you die, there will be no problems in your life. So don't worry. That answer is coming for you later on in your life. But right now, what are we going to do? 
Let's do what the church did. Let's hold on to the covenant and go into prayer, guys. Amen? Amen. When we decide to do that, the answer comes from God. Right? It is when we trust God, God takes care of us. That's what we need to do. So hold on to Christ and go into prayer. Answers will come. That's the response that the church showed. Response that the church showed. When church shows a response, do you think God just sits back and watches and do nothing? No, what moves God is the response of the people of God for the sake of the gospel. Okay? So secondly, what happened? God responds. God responds. So what happened? Uh, verse 6 to 8, the angel of the door comes and rescues Peter. And if you guys know the story, right? Peter is, what is he doing? The next day he's got to be hanged and killed. What is Peter doing? He's sleeping. He's sleeping. I get a nap. He's like, oh, I'm going to tire. I'm going to go to sleep. Um, I'm King Herod, why didn't he just kill him right away? Because if you read in the verse, it says he wanted to wait until the Passover, Right, And that, why do you think he's waiting until the Passover? So that more people and more crowd would gather for the Passover. So in front of all these people, which is Jews like seeing Christians being punished. So, hey, I'm going to look good in front of all these people. So I'm going to wait until Passover. So at that very night, angel of the Lord comes. And what does he do to Peter? He kicks him on the side. <laughs> he's so deeply asleep, the angel had to kick him on the side, right? You know, side is probably like or on the rib area here where it really hurts, right? <laughs> like, oh, oh. <laughs> Peter's like, what's going on? <laughs> and the angel of the Lord wakes him up by kicking him on the side, right? That's the movie scene right there, isn't it? I mean, he wakes him up with, hey, put some clothes on. Time to go. So he puts on this cloak, right? I mean, think about Harry Potter. You guys watch Harry Potter? <laughs> this invisible cloak. You put him, <laughs> he's walking out, right? I mean, that's where the Harry Potter got this idea from, the biblical idea, of course. Duh. Okay. All right. Read the Bible, guys. You get all the great ideas. Amen? So he put, uh, the angel of the comes. What do he do? He rescues Peter. He rescues Peter. Who can stop when the Lord, angel of the comes, and he does something? He rescues you, right? I mean, think about it. At, at, at first, Peter's like, what's going on? <laughs> it, it, and he said, he didn't know what was going on. He thought he was having some kind of vision. He thought he was having some kind of dream, right? Wow, I'm dreaming this, he would have thought. Um, because these amazing things are taking place. So as this is taking place, you know what happens? In the middle, in the process of the God is changing Peter, right? To help him realize, hey, when you live for the gospel, answers come. Peter is firsthand experiencing it. Firsthand experiencing it. He sees the angel comes, and after a while, he finally realized, wow, God sent an angel for my aid and set me free. Okay? When I decided to live for Christ, God sends his angels and, and leads and guides us and works in our lives. Amen? Amen? That is one of the authority that you have the right to enjoy. God sends his heavenly angels for your aid. Amen? Amen. Prepares everything for us. Um, this week, I was going through trying to knock on doors of uh, embassies. Um, if you haven't known until now, I'm a very shy person. <laughs> to go knocking at a door that I don't know, I'm not invited in, is something that I will never, ever, ever do on my own. Never. Okay? Even if I'm dying and uh, about to die with a, a gunshot wound, I will not uh, ring the doorbell to an unknown house. Okay? But I have to, <laughs> uh, because uh, you know I have to I have to go and invite people through the embassy. So I was at Itaewon, and uh, here's Embassy of Fiji. I was passing by the house. I was like, Oh, Embassy of Fiji. They speak English, okay. So uh, I think God want me to go in here. Like I don't want to, but He wants me to. Okay. So uh, I did ding dong, <laughs> and it's like ding 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 ding. <laughs> Uh, no answer. I was like, good. <laughs> I, was, I was about to walk away. And a couple steps down the road, it goes, ding. Ah, oh. oh, dang it. <laughs> I mean, if the door didn't open, I would be fine. My conscience would have been fine. Because I tried, God. See, you didn't open, so I was, I'm going to go. The door opens. I was like, oh, no. So I walk in the door. I walk in, and these like couple kids, like maybe eight year old couple girls, are out there. It's like, hi, who are you? And like, oh, hi, I'm just uh, somebody from the neighborhood. Hi, uh, and uh, the, the, the girls are inviting me in. So I, I went in. I thought it was the embassy. To find out, it was the house of the ambassador. Okay, it was the ambassador's house, the residence. So I went there, and there was just family, just a house. And um, there was like, hi, and I explained. I said. 
So I'm from uh, this place. We have a big festival going on. I said, we have uh, K-pop artists coming. And the girl's like, K-pop, we want to go, we want to go. <laughs> from that, it was game over. From that, the kids wanted to go. The embassy kids wanted to go, so the parents, okay, all right, well, where is it? Okay. So they wanted to go. I, I introduced them. Everything got connected. I got the number. The whole family is going to come, okay? So uh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, if it was up to me, do you think I would have saw that answer? No. I would have walked right past by it. God could have signed pointing to that house all over the place. I would have ignored it. I would have just went on my way, right? But... God started changing me, right? God, started, God, you know how God changes you? He changes you by showing you what he has prepared for you in the field. Amen? Amen. So when you over, get out of your shell, get out of your comfort zone and say, God, I want to do and exactly follow what you want me to do, which is what? Which is prayer. Prayer is what? Me following God. That's prayer. Not saying I can, I don't want to. But because of this, but because of that, getting all those other excuses and say, I want to follow you. That's what prayer is. When that takes place, Peter began to receive answers. Okay. Not only God, that God changed Peter. He changed the church who was praying for the Peter. I mean, you guys know the church. You guys know this story, right? The Peter, the church was praying for Peter when God set free. Peter, the angel set him free. Peter's like, wow, God's working in my life. I need to go and tell the church. He goes to the church, to the house, rings the doorbell. Dang, 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 dang. Right? This is Peter. Open up. The servant goes like, oh, Peter's here. <laughs> he goes, she goes up, tells the house, Peter's here. Guess what? Everybody's in the house. Oh, what crazy girl. Come on, get out of here. We're praying here. Come on, stop saying this nonsense. No, Peter's at the door. Oh, come on. What are you talking about? I mean, they're praying for Peter, right? For his safety, for his freedom, so that he can continue sharing their gospel. Yet when the answer comes, they have absolute unbelief. Right? They didn't really believe God was going to answer. I mean, they were just praying, you know. So Peter, Peter's there. Peter walks in. And they're everybody surprised. And hears about, and then Peter begins to tell them what the Lord, the angel of the Lord did for him. Right? And everybody was amazed, and they were changed. Okay, not only did God change Peter, God changed the entire church. Amen? Amen. When God works, that's the kind of evidence that takes place. When you begin to see, wow, God is working in my life. God is working with our church. God is doing this amazing ministry through our ministry. When you begin to see this, then we change, right? Pastor John always say, going beyond from your standard to God's scale. That's when we begin to see what God is doing and we entrust our life to the Lord. Amen? Amen? The response of the church brought about God's response. And as a result, amazing change was taking place. Um, and that response of God can be summed up in number three. The working of the Holy Spirit. The working of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit works, you know what happens? The forces of darkness are broken down. Amen? Amen. At the beginning of this chapter, what does it say? But at that time, King Herod laid violent hand on those who belonged to the church. Violent hand. When you see something like that, they're, they're afraid. They want to hide. They don't know what's going to happen. But at the end of it, what happened? The forces of darkness are broken down. God kills King Herod, right? All the situation, the timing completely now changed. Amen? God works, the Holy Spirit works, changing the very field that we're in. Amen? God allowed the persecution, right? God rescues Peter. God changes Peter and the church, and God kills Herod. Who's at the centerpiece of this story? God. Amen? Amen. Holy Spirit. We are people who can experience the same answer in our life. We are people who can experience the working of the Holy Spirit taking place in our personal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and as a result, what took place is that the word of God increased and multiplied. Multiplied. How does the multiplication of the early church take place? Is it just like they wake up and snap a finger, a thousand people gather, wow. I mean, that's what we read. But is that really what just took place? No, it's people like you. People like you in the early church who saw the working of the Holy Spirit. What did they do? They did exactly the same thing. They went out and preached the gospel. 
this ministry of Yewon English Ministry is not done by Pastor Tom. Do you guys know that? It is done together as the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? You guys are the pastors of the field going out there proclaiming the gospel in the field. As we come together at church, God will give us more numbers and growth to take place. Not for sake of growth, but the, for the sake of world evangelization. Amen? Amen. Uh, so, you know, a couple of weeks back, I told you at Itaewon Festival, I met um, uh, the, one of the secretary from Sierra Leone. Right? She recognized me, motioned me, and said, hey, come here. And so I went, and, you know, I know her from getting my visa when I went to Sierra Leone uh, earlier this year. Um, so I called her back. We had a meal together. We had a meal together. And uh, I said, hey, we're doing, having this big festival. So we would like to invite the uh, ambassador of Sierra Leone. And you guys can come in and do a booth. And that came out. Uh, a meeting. We had a meeting, a nice meal. Everything went well. And the ambassador of Sierra Leone is going to come to our, to our festival. And uh, their whole office worker are going to come. There's about 15 of them in their office. Uh, they're going to come. And I talked to them at the office. Uh, lady and she's like oh, so you know they're so tired <laughs> she was complaining to me because they got so many things going on in the office now I just give them another work to do <laughs> and I said well don't worry we'll take care of you when you come she says don't please don't take care of us we have to come again next time so <laughs> but uh, the whole point is that what God brought about all these answers right I mean it was up to my personality these answers would I would never seek I would never experience but when I decided to live for God and make the decision in my life to do so, it's God working in my life. Amen. Okay? And these kind of same answers you guys need to experience. Would you need to experience this? It's not about, oh, I can't, or you can't, or we can't. It's about what God is going to do. Amen? Amen. And we open our eyes to see what God is doing. We will change. We as the church will change. Amen? Amen so that we can live our life for God. Um, so in conclusion, all these things, as we live for Christ, we need, we need to receive healing. And how do we do that? You, you take this amazing covenant and you apply 24, 24. You think about the covenant God's given you all the day of your life, every moment in your life, amen? amen. How do you think about something 24 hours a day? Obviously, you have not got, you know, met somebody you like right? <laughs> or, or, or go to somewhere fun you like to go. Right? That's 24 will take place. Okay? I told you when, my, when I bought my son a, a basketball rim for the first time. I bought him a little toy basketball rim. And he was playing with it for like three hours, throwing a ball. And then when he's sleeping, what was he doing? He's doing this in his sleep. He's doing this in his sleep. What is he doing? He's playing basketball in his sleep. He's even dreaming about basketball. Okay? That's 24, guys. Amen? Amen. If you can do that with the covenant of God, if you can do that with the message of God, Amen. because we constantly fill our mind with nonsensical things, things that hurt us, things that are dangerous to us, we think about that constantly, right? We need to change that to God and answers will come and change will come amen? amen what would you do today right now is the time when we hold on to that covenant God I want to live my life for you God amen? amen when the persecution and hardship comes I want to make the decision to live for you so that I can be victorious so that amazing answers can take place in, your, in my life so that I can bring about the people of God to receive and understand this gospel in your life so let's take this moment to pray together right now God place deep in my soul right now right now so that my every day of my life I will live only for Jesus Christ amen let's pray together this time Heavenly Father thank you so much for the message you've given to us as we hold on to the covenant you've given to, given to us today help us to be people to live our life only for you and face adversity. Help us not to be afraid or scared of the problems that are taking place in our life, but in all the things that, that are taking place in our life, help us to make the decision to live for you so that the hand of God may be upon our life. Help us to hold on to this so that as we live our life, it will be only for your glory so that many people can come to hear and understand the power of the gospel, Father. Pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.